Hello, welcome to section 7.2. We're talking about trigonomic functions of angles, day four. Another recap, everything on chapter six was in degrees, 45 degrees, um, 75 degrees, 180 degrees, everything with degrees. Chapter seven is all about radians. So everything we have, you can think of in degree, but then do the transformation into radian. Okay, so a couple examples in standard form for us to look at. This first one is 2 pi over 3 radian. Again, starting at the x-axis, going counterclockwise, ending with the terminal side, is 2 pi over 3 radian. Positive, because we're going counterclockwise. If I start at the x-axis and went clockwise, notice it's negative 2 pi over 3 radian. On the top here is positive pi or negative pi, depending on starting at the x-axis, what direction you go. Everything is in terms of radian. You'll notice this picture is what we've looked at before. The point px denotes the point where the terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle. Same with degrees, but now we're in radian mode. Here is the equation for the unit circle. <coughs> Excuse me. If it's ever asking you to verify if a point is on the unit circle, verify if point is on unit circle, you're just going to plug into this formula and make sure that it's true. So you might be asked that in homework or in these notes as we go. When it asks, can you verify, it just means plug it into the equation of the unit circle and make sure that it's true. But this is just like before, now we're in radians. The trigonomic functions are the same as well. Cosine is going to be x, and we can kind of visualize that. If I went down here, this is my x, this is my y, and this is 1 because it's the unit circle radius of 1. Well, cosine of my angle oops, sorry, is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 1. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's y. Tangent is y over x, and the secant, cosecant, cotangent are all those reciprocals, just like chapter 6. Now, same picture. We're going to use it to calculate the trigonomic functions in radians now. Think back to when we did degrees. I gave a little shortcut if it ends up on the x-y axis. Sine, cosine. Sine, this i turns to a 1, which means here's negative 1 and 0, 0. This o in cosine is 0. 0, positive 1, negative 1. That's going to be the same thing for a unit circle with radian. So evaluate the trigonomic functions of pi halves radian. That is, determine the cosine of pi halves. OK, if I'm thinking pi halves, in my head, I can convert to degree if I want, or realize that pi halves is just 90 degrees. So it's this line right there. That's pi halves. Looking at it in terms of cosine, same thing. Cosine will be 0. Sine would be 1. Tangent is y over x, or sine over cosine. Well, the sine is 1 over 0, which is undefined. So the cosine at pi halves is 0, sine of pi halves is 1, which means the tangent at that angle is undefined. Using these three, it's easy to find the next three. Secant is 1 over cosine. Well, 1 over 0 is, again, undefined. Sorry, this is so small. Undefined. Cosecant is 1 over sine. 
So that's just going to be 1. Cotangent is 1 over tangent, which will then be 0 over 1, which is 0. So we're looking just at that angle of pi halves, and those are my six trig functions. Part B, look at there's degrees. Oh, the best, right? Going back to chapter six. Well, degrees is going to be the same angle. This is 90 degrees. It's the exact same as pi halves. So the cosine is still zero. The sine is still one. That connection is there. Please use that. If you love chapter six, use it. If you're like, uh oh, not my favorite, well, chapter seven is your redemption. Let's try a couple more. Getting our heads in radian. We've looked at this before as well. This is a very good spot to go to when you're having all of these six trig functions you need to find. If you understand this idea that they are the reciprocals, it's very nice to just plug in and solve. Okay. Our coordinate point here, px, sorry, pxy, can also be written as the cosine and the sine because cosine is the x value. Cosine is my adjacent over a hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse of the unit circle is 1 because of the equation of the unit circle. Use that to your benefit as you're going through this. It's just the reciprocals of x and y. You guys are loving all these visuals, am I right? So I'm going to quickly write down a couple key values that we want to look at so that we are used to the unit circle. I'm going to also put it in degree and in radian. If I look at just this right picture over here, I'm given three angles, one, two, three, and I guess you could say fourth with 90. Let's put the most useful angles. Well, this one would be 30 degrees. This next curve is going to be my 45 degrees. And my last one is my 60 degrees. Right, those are known values. Let's quickly put those in radian. 30 degrees, if you want to still do the conversion of times pi over 180, go for it. It's the same thing as pi over 6. 45 degrees is the same thing as pi over 4. If you're like, where did this come from? Go back to day 2. Day 1 and day 2 will help. And 60 degrees is really pi thirds. Notice the connection. They're the same on the picture on the left. So I'll quickly write these in. This is really your pi sixth. This is still your pi fourths or 45 degrees. And this is pi thirds or 60 degrees. Let's find their proper cosine and sine. Because for each point, it's cosine, sine in the unit circle for any point. Because of our knowledge of perfect right triangles, we have our 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, or pi thirds, pi sixth, 90, pi, pi over 4, pi over 4, 90. It's the same. So Cosine of my 30 degrees, or pi 6, cosine, root 3 over 2. Sine, 1 half. The cosine of pi 6 is root 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. If you prefer to look at it as the cosine of 30 degrees, you'll still get root 3 over 2. You'll still get those values. The cosine of pi force, when you rationalize denominator, 
root 2 over 2, and same thing for the sine. Cosine of pi over 3, or cosine of 60 degrees, is 1 half, and root 3 over 2 is the cosine. If you like it in degree, you can still work there. I'm just trying to show the connection. Okay, so those are our special angles. Here's a couple examples we're going to try. I'm going to draw quickly my unit circle. I'm sorry, my x, y axes. Unit circles are all up there. Quickly put in, okay, the sine is 1, negative 1, 0, 0. This cosine will be 0, 0, negative 1, 1. Looking at our first one. Cosine of pi halves. Well, pi half starts at the x-axis. Heads up here. Cosine of pi halves, we've done that one, is 0. Tangent of pi halves. Tangent is y over x, or sine over cosine. So the sine of pi halves over the cosine of pi halves. I know from right next to it, the cosine of pi halves is zero. Sine of pi halves is one. One divided by zero is undefined. Do not leave it as one over zero. You have to tell me undefined. Secant of pi halves. Secant is 1 over cosine. Well, the cosine is 0. So 1 over the cosine, it's going to be 1 over 0. That one's undefined. Sine of pi halves, that's actually right here. Sine from here to here. 1, bada bing. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So now it's going to be cosine over sine. Cosine over sine will just give me 0. Our last one brings in a little bit of a rotation. So I'm going to change my color even. We are finding 7 pi over 2. If I were to draw x, y axes, let's find where 7 pi over 2 is. Here's pi halves. Right here is all the way to 2 pi. Oops, sorry, that's not what I wanted. So here's 2 pi. Keeping the pattern going, you would end here. That's 7 pi over 2. Here's 1. So 1 half, 1, 2. I guess that's hard to see. So here, guys, this is 2. This is 2 pi. And we need to go 3 more to get 7 over 2. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 halves. Because each one is a half. Half, half. Half, 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 half. Gives you seven halves, seven halves pi. So I'm asked for the cosecant of this angle, this terminal angle right here, this terminal side right here. So secant, remember, is one over sine. Well, sine here on this line, sine is negative one. So it's one over negative one which is just negative 1. If you wanted to, totally an option, if you wanted to change this into degrees and then graph it in degree mode, totally fine as well. Whatever is helping you connect chapter 6 and 7. Let's calculate some trig functions. Evaluate the trigonomic functions of negative pi. So first thing is we have to graph it. Because it's negative, you're starting at the terminal side. 
sorry, starting at the x axis and ending at this terminal side right here. This is negative pi. Now we're going to find all the trig functions. based on this angle. So we're gonna start off with cosine. So cosine of negative pi, remember the cosine of this horizontal line is gonna be negative one. You also can look at it as it's the x value. The cosine is the x value. Well, this x value in the unit circle, I can even draw, the unit circle of life is negative one, because it's the full, lady, full radius length away, however you want to think of it. The sine. Sine is really your y value. You can also think of it in terms of sine, everything on the horizontal axis will be zero. And the y is zero, it doesn't go up at all. Tangent is sine over cosine, so y over x. The y is 0 over negative 1. You get 0. From here, pick your other three, and we can just run with them. Why don't I pick secant? Secant is just 1 over x. Well, I know x is negative 1, so 1 over x is going to be negative 1. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so 1 over y. Oops, the y is going to be 0. That means I'm going to be undefined. That's okay. Cotangent is x over y. X is negative 1, Y is 0, uh-oh, denominator of 0. That's okay, just undefined. So you just found the six oops, trig functions for pi, negative pi. Part B wants you to find it for actual pi, positive pi. Make it a little nice, right? This now is in the counterclockwise direction. It does have the same terminal side, and it will have the same point on the unit circle. Beautiful. Let's go through and solve. Cosine of positive pi. Cosine is going to be negative 1, or you can think of it as the x value. It's still negative 1. The sine of pi is the y value. Sine, you don't move up and down. That is also 0. Tangent, y over x, 0 divided by negative 1, 0. Hopefully you're seeing the pattern here. I'm just going to write these out. Secant is the reciprocal, so it's going to still be negative 1. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which would be undefined. And the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which will also be undefined. Here are your six trig functions for pi. What do you notice? They're the same. Yay! They're the same because it's the same terminal side. No matter if it's positive pi or negative pi, if it is the same terminal side, the same point, every trig function is going to be the same. So if you get asked this question on a homework, positive pi, negative pi, if you're asked those, they're going to be the same. They have the same terminal side. So hopefully you're reading my hint there. We'll see who makes their life easy. We'll do a little bit.
bit of estimating as always, just so you get the idea. We're going to start with which one's larger, sine of 3. So right here, here's 3. So I'm going to draw my little angle here. So here's y and here's my x. Or sine of 1. Here's 1. Here's my y. Here's my x. I'm looking at sine. Sine is my y value. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And this is always one, right, unit circle. So I'm comparing my y's. Which y is bigger? Here or here? Ah, oh, it's super clear, right? Sine of 1. That y value is much bigger. Now let's look at cosine of 1. So I'm just going to show here's the cosine of 1, the x value. Or cosine of 2. I am just looking at the x values. The x value for 1 and the x value of 2 are the same distance away. But keep in mind, this x value is negative. This x value is positive. Maybe this is positive 1. This is negative 1. Looking at it, it's kind of clear then that this one's going to be bigger because any positive number is bigger than a negative number. We're going to look at tangent of 1 or tangent of 4. So here's my tangent of 1. I know all my colors are mixing together. I'm sorry. And here's my tangent of 4. Y, negative X, negative Y, positive Y, positive X. So looking at it, tangent is my sine over cosine, my Y over my X. Well, this Y and this X look pretty similar to this y and this x. Like Distance-wise, I don't see like a huge difference. But do you see how this x is looking like a little bit bigger than this one? Just by the picture here to here, estimating looks a little bit bigger. So since it's a little bit bigger and you're dividing by x, that means you're going to be dividing into smaller pieces. So I would say this one is bigger just by a tad due to the fact that this x value is longer than this one. Okay, so kind of put your best judgment there as you're looking. Sometimes it's very clear like sine of 1 and sine of 3. Other times, you're going to have to be a little careful on your estimating. Last but not least is your partner challenge or lone wolf challenge. Get this done. Okay, try it. Worst thing you can do is not know what you're doing and put something down on paper and it clicks. Who knows? So what I'm going to have you do, I'm given this point P is negative one half negative root 3 over 2. You're going to first verify that it's on the unit circle. I mentioned that in the notes. I'm going to say, look back. I told you how to do that. Find the six trig functions at theta. So that means I'm finding this angle right here. This is my terminal side. Find all your trig functions. Sine of theta, cosine theta, tan, secant, and you're going to do that based on the point you were given. Hintity, hint, hint, look back. And then part three is compare the six trig functions to if we looked at this angle. 
Again, all of this was mentioned in the video. So if this is the one partner challenge you ever participate in, do it. I have told you how to do each of these parts in this video. Good luck. I will check this in class. And this is day four.